But let's look, though, at some of the key provisions in the president's jobs plan and in his family's plan. And I want to put them up on the screen. A hundred billion dollars for workforce development. $400 billion to care for the elderly and disabled, $225 billion for child care, and $200 billion for free preschool. Senator, which of those programs that I just put up, which of those programs do you think people in your state don't need? Every one of those programs should be evaluated. If it's important, it should be advanced. It's not infrastructure. When people say, wait a second, I like this because we need a new bridge across the Calcasieu River in Lake Charles, I'm saying this plan will not give it to you. The amount of spending for roads and bridges is so low that and split between 50 states over five years, you're not going to get your bridge. Now, we may need this. By the way, we just are restarting our, uh, our, our, our bipartisan uh, working group to come at family support for the dependent, uh, children and elderly. But that is not going to give you a road and bridge. And that's what people in my state would really like to see. Yeah, but, but I guess the question is, and, and you know, we could argue, and I have uh, uh, back and forth with both sides about infrastructure, but there are a lot of programs that aren't infrastructure. And the question I'm asking you is, should, would you support the government paying for them? I mean, I, I looked into it. In your state of Louisiana, the, the, the rate of child poverty is 25%. One in four of the children in Louisiana are in poverty. And according to the White House, 42% of residents in Louisiana do not have access to, chi to child care. So don't they want, wouldn't they benefit, forget whether it's infrastructure or not, wouldn't they benefit from these government programs? So I don't know if they would. If you think about the main driver of elevating out of poverty, it's good education. Now, what we saw in the pandemic was teachers unions keeping schools shut, even when the Centers for Disease Control said it was safe to go back. The president wants to give universal pre-K run by the same teachers unions. Now, if you're in Chicago and there's more money going to the school systems and to the unions, and yet they still won't open, not because the CDC says it's uh, not safe, but because they don't want to, your kids are not going to have a better education. They're just not. So whether or not these programs benefit those who need it, we don't know, because it's going through a system which is so poorly served, these same folks we wish to help. This is Republican Senator Bill Cassidy finally getting called out for blocking funding to his own constituents just so that he can oppose Joe Biden's agenda. Because these people aren't in power to actually help their own constituents, they're in office to consolidate power for their own party. Period. Now, Republicans are hellbent on trying to reframe the conversation surrounding the American Jobs Plan to suggest that everything within the plan doesn't fall within the definition of infrastructure. Now, first of all, this isn't the American Infrastructure Plan, it's the American Jobs Plan. Infrastructure may be the theme, but the goal is jobs. And yet still Republicans are trying, unsuccessfully I should add, to convince people here that they couldn't possibly allow this package to pass because when they think about infrastructure, they only think about roads and bridges. Meaning that when it comes to helping people, as far as Republicans are concerned, their top priority is adherence to dictionary definitions. Got it. But second of all, the more telling point is that aside from their gripes on the definition of infrastructure, when they're asked what they would actually get rid of in this plan, which elements of it they don't agree with, they can't name anything. And that's all the proof you need that this bill is popular among both Democrats and Republicans. Americans want broadband connectivity to 100% of the country. Americans want investments in the care economy so that parents watching children and even adults watching elderly parents can be freed up to go get jobs and stimulate the economy. Americans want electric vehicle charging stations so that we can stop worrying about expensive gas station visits every week and finally into the future. Americans want upgraded veterans hospitals. Americans want to replace lead pipes. And yes, Americans want upgraded roads and bridges and ports and mass transit. The point is that what's in the American Jobs Plan is not only needed, but wanted by Americans across the political spectrum. And Republicans know that, which is why their priority is to desperately pivot to dictionary definitions and hope that you'll get distracted. Chris Wallace literally brings up the fact that in Cassidy's own state of Louisiana, the rate of child poverty is 25%, which by the way, is the second highest in the entire United States. And yet when asked if his state would benefit from seeing the government programs laid out in the American Jobs Plan, Cassidy's response is, I don't know. Don't they want, wouldn't they benefit, forget whether it's infrastructure or not, wouldn't they benefit from these government programs? 
So I don't know if they would. Apparently the guy representing the state with almost the highest child poverty rate in the country doesn't know if a package that includes affordable child care so that parents can go out and get jobs to earn money to lift their families out of poverty is a good thing. Yeah, I'm with Bill here. We should probably just stay the course and not change anything and continue to allow one in four kids to live below the poverty line in Louisiana. Of course Bill Cassidy knows the answer to that question. The only problem is that it's inconvenient for him because the package was released by Joe Biden. And so even though it includes common sense solutions, here we have a United States Senator representing one of the most impoverished states pretending on national television that he's not sure if a solution aimed at reducing poverty is a good idea or not. The lengths that these people will go to in service of their partisan hackery is mind boggling. Cassidy even suggests that the real way to lift people out of poverty is a good education. In other words, Cassidy's answer here to solve poverty in a state with not only the second highest child poverty rate, but the second highest overall poverty rate in the nation is just to go get Get a good education. Hear that parent struggling to make ends meet? Just go back to school. See? Solved. That should pay the bills and get food on the table in no time. Oh, that's, that's ridiculous? You don't say. All this does is prove just how out of touch these Republicans like Bill Cassidy actually are. As if the solution to poverty right now is simply to get an education. People need to pay rent today. They need to keep the heat or air conditioning on today. They need to put food on the table today. And while of course getting an education is one of many positive long term solutions to help lift people out of poverty systemically, it doesn't do anything for the people who need to pay their bills right now. This package offers immediate solutions for people who need them immediately. Bill Cassidy's solution is a bad faith and reductive answer that does quite literally nothing for the inordinate number of people living in poverty in the state that he's supposed to be representing. The fact is that this plan would not only help Americans, but Bill Cassidy state specifically. And that should speak volumes, because it's proof that these Republicans are willing to let their constituents suffer if it means they get to deprive a Democratic president of just one more accomplishment. Again, an accomplishment that would help disproportionately Cassidy's own state. And so they'll continue to twist themselves into pretzels trying to show why we shouldn't invest in the United States, but that pretty much gives their entire platform away. Let America crumble so long as Joe Biden doesn't get credit for building it back. To see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And for a deeper dive, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I discuss the week's top stories and interview major players in the world of politics, like Vice President Kamala Harris, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Chuck Schumer, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.